So Mark, out in Arizona, in your situation here, what would be your most pressing or your biggest uh, sort of test and disease problems that you have to deal with? Well, if you're going to grow strawberries, you're going to get spider mite. Uh, it's almost a guarantee. Uh, fortunately, for winter production, the spider mites tend to be a little bit dormant, so they're not as big of a problem through the winter, and that's a real benefit for wintertime production. But they're still probably going to happen. And uh, the, one of the ways that you can help uh, control that, that pest is you can introduce predator mites. Um, one of the predator mites, Californicus, uh, you can put on the crop before you see any evidence of spider mites because the, that particular mite can survive on, on the pollen on, from the flowers. And so it's there when the spider mites finally arrive and then it can start feeding and keep it in control. Um, it takes, spider mites always breed faster than predator mites. So if you do start to see some spider mite sign in your, in your, in your, in your crop, then you might want to add something like persimilis, which is a much more aggressive predator mite and, and really moves around very quickly and, and will eat itself out of house and home, so to speak, and, and, and consume all the spider mites that it can. But then once that food source goes away, it goes away too. But those, those Californicus are still in the crop working away. So that's a, that's a real good thing to add to your crop is, is that, that predator mite. Um, so you're using two different species there, the Californicus and the Persimilus. Right, Californicus we try to keep in the crop. Okay. Um, Persimilus is more of a, a hot spot type, type treatment. Um, both very effective. Uh, sometimes spider mite can just blow up on you. Um, that's happened to us. And then you really need to control it um, either chemically um, or you can use a softer chemical too. When, if you start to see pretty evidence, the strong evidence of spider mite, what I will also do is just treat with um, a safer soap. And of course that requires more pretty frequent applications like every three days because it only pretty much kills the adults. But I also only treat that area that I see affected because frankly safer soap doesn't taste too good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's a way to keep it the, the mites uh, in control in that in that zone until maybe you can get predator mites on. If you if you have applied safer soap and you're going to apply predator mites, I, I like to wash off the safer soap because it's hard on predator mites too. Um, if you've got a really big problem, there are miticides you can use, and if you if your crop you you, know, you need to save your crop, you, you won't hesitate right, right. to do that. Of course, people are going to be in different locations, so they need to know and follow the labels, That's recommendations right. on those things if they're actually going through those types of chemical controls. So after spider mites, after the different mites, what's your next? Well, for the first time, we've seen white fly in our crop uh, this year. And uh, strawberry isn't a favorite host of white fly. And we just apply um, Arimoceros uh, as you know, the little wasp control. And that seems to keep it entirely under control. We only ever see a few spider mites. I mean, sorry, uh, white, white flies. flies. Um, and so that typical parasitic wasp application for strawberry seems to work pretty well. Now, is that something, you, are you doing that as a preventative? Are you doing your yellow sticky card counts and there's some population number that you're looking for to do that? Or how are you using that? For white fly, as soon as I see white fly, then I'll put in the, the parasitic wasps. Okay. Um, and again, it's never become out of control like it can in a tomato crop um, in strawberry. So that doesn't seem to be a favored host for white fly, but we still want to treat it. We don't want to let it get out of control. Um, another insect that we see um, pretty regularly is, is thrips. Um, right now, there's thrips in this crop, but they don't seem to really do much to the fruit or to the plant. Um, we, if, if I just feel like treating my uh -huh, <laughs> thrips, yeah. I'll use aureus, which is miniature pirate bug which uh, they really like thrips, and they'll, they'll, they'll go after them. You'll see them in the flowers waiting for the thrips. And they also eat everything else that's not bigger than them. And so it's, it's just a good predator to have in, in, your, in your crop to take care of just about anything. So if you're using other biological control agents, though, and you use aureus, do they feed on your other? Um, I don't. Aureus, uh, the, the other predator is typically pretty fast. Um, they may they may catch a Californicus. I don't know, but uh, it's it's worth the application. Okay. Okay. So what about diseases? You you you've got your your main insect pest. What do you what have you had with disease issues in this particular climate? Well, being in Arizona and being so dry, um, we we I think only once saw 
uh, powdery mildew, mm -hmm. um, and that was quickly dealt with by just removing the infected leaves and using a, a potassium salt by, a, a bicarbonate treatment. Um, so that's really not been an issue here. Um, but we do have uh, um, uh, botrytis, uh, and it's the, the fruit rot version of botrytis. And it will infect the flowers, um, and then it will sometimes just go dormant. And then when the fruit is maturing, then it'll reactivate, and then the fruit just rots. And eventually you'll get just a fruit covered in mold spores if you don't remove it in time. So, so that, like in this example, we see an example here where we've got that very young, small, uh, developing fruit. Mm -hmm. In the, this little spot here mm -hmm. is like that starting of botrytis. Right. That's, that's the botrytis. The fruit, it can go dormant. The fruit will outgrow that spot, and you won't even notice it until the fruit gains some size and starts accumulating some sugar that really allows the botrytis growth to go on. And then it'll just, if, again, if you don't remove it at that point, it'll soon just be covered, covered in in gray spores so but other than that we really don't have um, much in a way of, of plant diseases we're starting with clean product we're putting into a clean substrate that has some some disease suppression characteristics and we're maintaining the the sanitation in our house so plant diseases are really kept to a, quite a minimum in this system so you know discussing sort of this sustainable strawberry production in greenhouses mm -hmm. then you're actually using a lot of sustainable practices where you're really using sanitation, sanitation and scouting first, and screening, right. and then also trying to use a lot of biological agents. Right, we use biologicals when we can just because that allows us to harvest fruit all the time.